Hi. Hi. I'm sitting here talking now yeah. for a, a little bit. I want to thank you all for coming out on this warm Iowa day. I'm Loretta Murrow Jones, president of the Wellswick Historical Foundation, and for the curious, my parents would be George and Luella Mora, born on raised just over Blue Hill, and I like to say Blue Hill, so that's why I included it. <laughs> now, before we get started, we have a few things I'd like to go over with. Uh, the Wellswick Historical Foundation Board has been working hard to encourage folks to check out the museum's treasures as well as present pertinent history. If you were not able to come the last two weeks to our military presentation or the Doing History Day and you have access to Facebook, those videos have been posted for viewing. Can you guys all hear me? Because I know I have a low voice. Okay, very good. Um, so go ahead and check that out on Facebook. Uh, and speaking of the board, uh, Tammy Dieters Mount is our vice president. Marsha Gurus Beving is our secretary. She's been here quite some time. Terry Mount is treasurer, and yes, husband and wife. Uh, we have Burdette Walters, who's been on the board since the very beginning. Um, Arnold Niederhoff is also on the board, Dave Gurus, and then uh, Nancy ekoff Husman is our newest board, and then she's actually taking on all of the business of putting these things together this summer, so great help. Uh, we never throw an event without food, so you got to check out the kitchen if you haven't already <laughs> found it. And another display has been put together regarding today's topic, so check out as well uh, the sale items as well. Uh, there's three tables, I think, all together. So go ahead and pick up the free postcards. Uh, we encourage you to mail them, though, to family and friends because we want to spread the word. And if you miss the sign-up sheet, we ask that you do so. It helps our ego. We want to keep track. <laughs> okay. Um, if you have any questions as we're going through here, don't be afraid to ask them. Uh, if I don't know somebody in here on the board, someone will know the answer. Uh, but I didn't advise you all there's a test when we get done. <laughs> that made the hand slip because it always did when I was in school. <laughs> okay. So anyway, somebody will have the, the information here in the room. So now, I didn't design this title, but it's the Butter cutter and a water tower top. Let's go ahead and start that. Uh, it's focusing on the building exterior and outside history and donations. Okay, there we go. Um, Magic fingers. <laughs> or legs. This is a little bit of geography class, okay? This is the first known map, which is from 1884, as you can see here, showing the original plan of Wellsbrook Streets and if you can see them, Washington is correct, 4th is correct, all the 1st through 4th are correct, but they've got the others a little jumbled up. Uh-huh. Adams is, should be after Washington. Yeah, there's, there's that mix-up, which we thought was kind of interesting. Uh -huh. um, you have Block 11, which is where you're sitting today. Uh, the south half lots of 9 and 10 is where, is where the museum is posted, or built. Uh, it's labeled as a hotel. As you'll, in the, on the rest of the slides, you'll see where all that comes into place. Take a notice of the um, footprint that we have here because we're, this wasn't done by drone. I asked Tammy today, and they would have probably measured it out uh, to make it feel <coughs> hot. And we're not sure what this part of it necessarily is. So if anybody has any information about the house, make sure you let us know. Um, the museum is believed to be the oldest house in Wellsburg, built sometime around 1880 or even before. George Wells owned thousands of acres of land in this vicinity. Probably if you don't land around here, if you go over to Judea, you see George Wells' name on it at some point. He raised cattle, hogs, and crops, and it's believed that the house was built by him to house his ranch hands. They didn't call them farm hands with thousands of acres of land. After George's death in 1906, several local citizens owned the house. I think we have one sitting in the front row today. Mm -hmm. In 1930, the coating of pebble dash, was, pebble dash was applied, and at one time, the upstairs was used as an apartment. And I can swear to that because my cousin and her husband lived up there, and I did visit them. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay. This is the earliest known photograph that we photograph we have of the museum. When they were putting in sidewalks in 1907, you can notice that on the back side is what is a lean-to of some sort, a kitchen, summer kitchen perhaps, and that is, I think, the only picture we have of that particular uh, lean-to on the outside. Now you notice there's nothing much around it. It's re you really got a depth issue if you want to know what's out in the background. Um, so this is very, very early on. 
Um, looks pretty much though the way we see it now, especially from that angle. Okay. Now, this is originally a simple wooden house and a rock foundation. And you guys are not sitting over the basement. The basement's on the other half of the house. And this is what it looks down there. And we don't go down because the spiders don't like us particularly. <laughs> so that's what the basement looks like. Next slide. Okay, the Wellsburg Historical Foundation was formally established on January 11, 1993. Now, we're a 501c3 charitable organization, uh, so that is important to know if you're following for taxes. By March of 1993, the foundation had the deed in hand. Uh, you'll find that the abstract is laying back there in the kitchen. Uh, we think the purchase price, I believe, was $1,000, and much work was then needed, as you can see by the condition of the roof. Nothing really looks, perhaps looks a lot more like when Mardell saw it in, in earlier times than what it currently does. Um, the porches needed to be repaired, painting, window repair, replacement, roof, shingles, uh, just a long list. And one of the changes was to remove the north outside entrance, which was located right at the bottom of the stairs, up, uh, upstairs stairway, which in the kitchen, when you go look there, the stairs go up, and at one point you could go outside from that point. Uh, the house was also painted in period colors, and the outside foundation was insulated during this time. And then finally, in July of 1994, the first meeting was, was held here at the museum. Okay. Some people may be able to find themselves in the picture. Uh, the Wellsburg Historical Foundation was formally established on January 11, 1993. Many board members and volunteers spent hundreds of hours making the needed repairs. Um, I'm can't point out particular. I can point out one, but I'm not sure he wants me to tell me to tell him who he is. <laughs> but uh, this this is some of the construction that went on. And earlier we were talking about the spindles. They that was added. That was not there when the building was purchased. Okay. In fact, by I didn't mention it, but the house was up for demolition. Mm -hmm. It was saved by the fact that the foundation took it over. Okay. This is a shoe scraper. And it was used by those attending the German Number no. 8 Country School, also known as Flowing Well Country School. I wasn't a country school kid, so I don't know the country schools, but we don't have many pictures of that. At least some that we can say 100% we know who they are. So if any of you have that kind of stuff, let us know. And then Helen, in this picture right here, is Miss Staples. Uh, at that point in time, to, in, in the school in 1933, married in 34, and then was Miss, Mrs. Bevin. So she is the one who donated that. You can see the 1917 in it. And this is located when you come in the south door that you came today. It's out there. Um, I don't think you can take it home. It's a little heavy as you can tell. <laughs> so, um, but that's one of our early donations as far as my knowing of it. I'm the, one of the young ones on the Board. <laughs> okay, next picture. This is the <clears throat> foundation minutes. Well, it's not the foundation minutes. It is the community barn quilt Empire Star that's on the museum. Now, I'm a quilter, and so therefore I was actually a little bit, not a whole lot, involved in the production of what are the 8 by 8s that you see on the barns and the barn quilt uh, route that if you have the, uh, the Grundy County tourist book you'll find it in there every year with all 70 blocks and where they are and all that but they don't do these because these were four by fours this is the only one that i know still exists in wellsburg and at the time i only knew of three from personal experience and i think one of them was taken down and actually moved and it might be in michigan at this point <laughs> just knowing that the owner is there now um, you will this was done in august of 2008 south side of the building you know, right between these two windows and the two upstairs and we paid uh, the Barn Quilt Company 50 bucks for that. And it was at one time featured in a Barn Quilt magazine. So, but the community blocks didn't take off. So that's, we have one of the rare ones. And that, for, therefore, we were never on the tours when the tours were real popular to do too. Okay, let's go to the next one. This one is interesting. This is scroll work that was put up in 2010. Now, sections of the scroll, scroll work were found under the front east porch, this one right here, when the flooring was removed. There was not enough 
of existing, so there was more cut from new lumber in order to match and trim both porches, because you'll find it existing in both places. Uh, Mr. Dave Leverton provided the wood from the Leverton Mill by Steamboat Rock, and Lowell Rikana cut the scroll work. Again, 2010. And the next shot. Well, here comes part of the topic for the, for the day. Um, in 2009, the landmark Wellsburg Water Tower was taken down, and it supplied the town with running water since 1915. When I read that, I was annoyed. My father put in running water out on the farm in 52. <laughs> That's unfair. The city people got everything first. <laughs> everything. Um, now, if I understand it correctly, and this is sitting right here on the grounds, right here in the corner, um, the hole on the top had another red top, and was that the, the red light at that point in time? It had four bars going up with a little tin shade, kind of like on the top of the, the water tower Way top. Up in here. And then that's where the socket was in it. That's where the hole went through to, to get it up there, the electric up there. Okay. So and I think one of the boom gardens used to be the one that only one that had nerve enough to go up there and change the light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the water tower was on the northeast corner, block nine of the original plan of Wellsburg. Water from this tower supplied the town's people for over 90 years, 1915 until um, 2009. And then the city made the decision to hook up to rural water. So the water tower was no longer needed and was taken down because it was expensive to maintain. That would have been an issue at the time. I do believe, speaking of people going to the top of the water tower, um, I think my grandson actually did that. <laughs> I do believe he confessed Patrick? to Yes. He wasn't living here at the time, but his friends were here. Ah. Okay. I also believe that the top of the top, oh, there was a circle of red on the top when we first got it, but that kind of disintegrated it away. Disintegrated and went away? Yeah, it was red like a bullseye or something right. on the top, wasn't it? Because every uh, water tower that was serviced by this one particular company would paint the ball red. So when, when, well, you know the story. So anyway, Leon had painted it chrome aluminum and then red on the top. You can see red flakes on there, but the red kind of fell off. Yeah. So if you go through the countryside and you see a water tower with a ball and it's red, it's by that company. He told me the company, but I forgot. Okay. okay. Now the light was for, for airplanes, was it not? The reason they had the light on the very top? I don't know. I used to have that, and I thought I gave it to Leon, but... It's, it's, it, it just strikes me because of the fact that, at least today you do, every windmill we have out there has a light on top. Okay, let's go to the next slide. This is one that always makes me excited. <laughs> um, in 2018, the Foundation set in motion their next project, a walking tour of Wellsburg. Quote signature blocks were sold to help fund the project. That was the seed money. And I can tell you, having been part of this, things change over time. Uh, you are forced into making different decisions, etc. This board that you see in the picture sits right out here at the corner, and you can read the information about. Uh, let me see here if I can quickly pick up the fact that we have. I can't read this here, obviously. Um, One second. The information we were reading a little bit earlier, since uh, we have an owner here and we went through that information. Uh, at the very first par paragraph, it says the Wellsburg Historical Foundation was established in January of 1993 with the goal of preserving memories of and for the citizens of Wellsburg and the surrounding area. A museum site was located shortly thereafter, which happened to be the oldest house in town and had been built by George Wells, the founder of our town. And the town was plotted, lots 1, 2, 9, and 10, which we saw earlier, uh, of block 11, were set aside for Mr. Wells' use. He was the largest landowner in the county and needed a place for his hired hands to live. The location of his boarding house was located one block west of Adams Street, Main Street, on West 4th Street. It was lots 9 and 10 of block 11. The hired hands gave the house the nickname the Wells Hotel before the foundation decided on the same name for the new museum. The last paragraph says, 25 years has brought us a long way in developing a museum of cherished memories. Many persons have helped along the way by volunteering their time, labor, knowledge, and by serving on the board of directors. You'll notice at the bottom, 
you'll see repeti repetition of things, preserving our past uh, for our future. That's a, uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. That's something you'll see on other things that we produce. And Wellsburg Yesterday and Today is rather the, the name of our tour boards. These originally we thought we would be using uptown on our buildings and that has changed because it's a lot to read but it's important so what has happened here what you're you can't see outside here yet is there's going to be uh, an addition let me see if i've caught up with everything here there will be ultimately be signs on the buildings on main street providing brief history of each so rather than these we have an, a, a plan a future plan about the different kinds of boards to signs to be used on them now the subject matter boards, which is this, and you'll find more of them than sitting in the kitchen, will be installed on the muse <clears throat> excuse me, museum grounds so visitors can read about the town's history even when the museum is not open. Currently six boards are completed with one already being placed on the grounds outside of the southeast corner of the museum, and the other five boards will be placed once the new vinyl fence is installed. This is what the fence will look like. It is not tall, it's 43 inches, I believe. And so therefore that will go on the north and west side of the house. Uh, we, we signed a contract for that, but as everything else is going on in 2021, it's a matter of when they have time to install and the materials, et cetera. So we're waiting for that part of it. Tour guides were also published in 2020 and 2021, and rather than wait for everything to be put together, which is time consuming, two tour guides are now out. And uh, we've got at least one, I believe, out there in the kitchen. And you will find them, uh, it's the bank and the library and the brick bungalow that we try to have those things on hand. That means you can drive around town on a specific subject, walk or drive, and get the history on those particular locations. Uh, and again, the 42-inch vinyl fence will be installed on the north and west, and it'll provide the backdrop for all of these signs, and there could be some other donations that might very well fit in with all of that. Okay, here comes the other half of what we were, what we're talking today. We call this the butter cutter. This is setting on the porch right here on this end of it. Uh, it's a new acquired donation. It was used by Junker Dairy. The box is missing, so sitting on top of here, there would normally have been a box, and in the picture you can see what that looks like. The butter would be placed in the box and then the wire frame put on top, which is this right here, and then the butter would be pushed up into the box and the wire would cut it, making these. I don't know if you guys all remember the butter that came locally, but that's what this was, was used for. It is uh, produced by the Friday Butter Printer Manufacturing Company out of Cedar Rapids. The Wellsburg Creamery was operated first by H.G. Kramer and later by Ray Geimer. It was in business from 1922 until Gordon Junker bought the business in 1944. And for the next 35 years, Wellsburg was supplied with the best butter and ice cream around. A bulk of this butter was marketed with Lakeside Butter Company of Chicago a subsidiary of Safeway grocery chain. You'll also find that on Facebook, that was a recent picture posting, and uh, that is something that we try to do too, is put pictures on Facebook. Okay, next picture. Okay, this sign, uh, it's at the southeast corner of the property behind me, or by the street. The property was installed in 1998. The boards were originally stained, and in 2017, the boards were painted to match the house with back black lettering which allows for better viewing and in 2003 the flag and flagpole were purchased with memorial money from the Clausen family the flag has been replaced several times since and you'll notice the brick came from the old depot which you see here and up close it says Oskaloosa I don't know if they were cutting on in Oskaloosa or where that was done is that what they were it was from Oskaloosa okay so that's what we used around the base of that we being a general term, I wasn't here at the time. <laughs> okay, next picture. This one's interesting. Who wants to know about this one? <laughs> this is a sidewalk. Okay, so the sidewalks uh, have a running board design in them if you've got a really good nose for looking for the print <laughs> because they used a running board when they to tap it down when they were made. That goes back to the picture way back at the beginning where they were laying the, the concrete. 
Uh, the picture doesn't show that diamond-shaped stamping. It's difficult at best to see the design. It's thought that. Okay, so uh, in a, our new letter of 2018, there's a portion of which was Thelma Ruder, our first president, wrote the following. The sidewalk along the east-west street show the markings of being the original cement walk laid in 1907. This city project was carried out for the entire distance of one mile from west to east. A few of the sections still exist and show an unusual pattern which was stamped into the edges of the cement squares by tamping down with a piece of running board. This method was meant to create some traction to prevent slippage. So, uh, maybe not the best picture in the bunch, but interesting history. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a, a picture of some of the remodeling that was done. The aluminum storm windows were removed and storm, wood storm windows were installed to give the house an original look. This is Don Deny in the picture. And the storms were acquired from a Wisconsin source, repaired and then installed. This picture would be over here, the bedroom window, correct? So on the other side of this wall is a bedroom and that would be the east window. Okay, next one. All right, Before, uh, the, per foundation minutes, trees were planted in 1997, a maple, a linden, and five ash. Okay, let's compare. I think this is interesting in the fact, if you get really close up, you can see just a little bit of the building or the trees going in. This would have probably been the maple. Over here would have been the linden. The ash would have been in front of here, but one of, there's some trees and not identified, which are the two oaks over here. And we know they're oaks because we just had tree people in who looking at taking care of them. So we haven't found the information about when they were installed. And I don't know if any of you guys that were on the original board remember that piece Your of Your dad, didn't you and Terry put those in? I think Terry did. Yeah. Okay, and one of the ashes are missing because there's a big gap here because we don't have five, we have four. Quite some growth in those. 25 years. Okay, next one. Uh, when the house was purchased, there were no railings along the porch and stairs were cement steps leading to the door. Earlier today, some of our guests commented on that. The smaller view also shows the north side prior to the entrance being removed. Um, quite a bit of difference in, in the look once you get all of the, the pretty paint job and all of that. But still looks quite a bit like what it did originally. Okay, now back to this, Wells Hotel. It's been told that the Wells Ranch Hands called this the Wells Hotel. We talked about that earlier, and that was them naming it. So when the museum uh, became into uh, a museum, the house, the foundation decided that the name for the new museum should simply be the Wells Hotel. If you look at Wellsburg history, this, you get the impression that this really was a hotel. We can't find where anybody rented rooms, but there were hotels in town. Kenny used to talk about baseball teams yes, when they same. would play down there somewhere that those guys would stay here if yeah. it was like a couple day tournament or something. Yeah, exactly. Kenny Adams was our oldest board member. We lost him here a couple, of, I guess it's a couple of years ago already. But yes, he had his, he, he had memory of, of teams coming in to, to stay. Okay, now last one, and this is a, a comment that I had when I started to look at this, and I have not, we've not discussed this, but I love the lightning rounds that we have. It's not on the original pictures as having it, but it's a great addition if that's the way that got there, and you can see the trees in there. So. I do thank you for coming, but before I let you go, I have to make at least one announcement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> July 31, next Saturday, the Wells Hotel Museum is going to be again open 1 to 4 with a 2 o'clock presentation. This is a little bit more fun. We're going to have connecting with the cookies in the kitchen. So old time mm -hmm. recipes will be sampled and shared. And if you wish, bring a printed recipe to share. And we can even make those photocopies and handouts. Now, I haven't heard any questions, so I guess maybe I shouldn't <laughs> test you on anything. Uh, any questions before we cut this down and go for the goodies? <laughs> Looks like we're good. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. I didn't have to work hard.